We are still continuing with factoring today. I'm sure you're surprised. And today we are going to look at factoring special cases. And if you've kind of noticed, each topic has got a little bit more specific on what we can factor, right? GCF works for sort of any number of terms and any type of terms. Then we get to grouping, which only works for four terms, but that's sort of our only specification. And then trinomial is only three terms, but they have to be in the category AX squared plus BX plus C. Now we get to special cases and it has even more <laughs> qualifications. Okay, so special cases have to be two terms. It has to be subtraction. And then here's sort of the tricky piece. They have to be perfect squares. Now, I'm hoping we've heard that word before, but a perfect square is anything that is created by multiplying a number times itself. So 25 is a perfect square because 5 times 5 is 25. 36 is a perfect square because 6 times 6 is 36. Okay. Now, I do not expect you to recognize every perfect square. So if you're not sure if a number is a perfect square or not, we can use our calculator to help us determine if it is. Okay, and the way we do that is by taking the square root of a number. Our square root button is in the light writing. So if you have the blue calculator, it's the light blue. I don't think I have the blue one right here with me right now. But, okay, it's in the light blue right above the x squared button. And to access anything that's in the writing above it, right, we have to hit the second button. So we would hit second, and then we would hit x squared, and we'll see that square root button show up on our calculator. So if you're like, I'm not sure if 36 is a perfect square, you do second x squared, type in 36, and then hit equals, and it gives you six, so we know it's a perfect square. Okay, now, if it's something like 120, and you go to check it, so you do second x squared 120, we get this big old long messy decimal, so that means it is not a perfect square. Okay. The other thing that we need to know is that perfect squares, yes, we can check the coefficient by doing our calculator, but they also have to have an even exponent. Okay, so if there's a variable, the variable has to have an even exponent. Okay. So we actually talked about multiplying special cases. So now we're just, again, doing that in reverse and factoring special cases. So let's say we have 9x squared minus 25. Okay, the first thing we want to do is check and make sure it fits this format. Okay, so it is two terms. Okay, it is subtraction. And now we want to check and see if they're perfect squares. Okay, so can we think of a number times itself that gives us 9? Yes, that's 3, right? And if you weren't sure, you could check it in your calculator by taking the square root of 9. Okay, then we're going to take half of the exponent because it's even. So what this says is 3x times 3x gives us 9x squared. So 9x squared is a perfect square, right? I took half of the exponent. Okay, then we'll check 25. Can we think of a number times itself that gives us 25? Yes, five times five is 25. Okay, so this meets all of the qualifications. Now, the good news is, once we've done all of that, we can then just write this into two binomials. So we can say, parentheses for two binomials, we have to keep these in the exact same order that we see them. So this will be a 3x and a 5. And again, the same order that we see them, a 3x and a 5. Now we need to put an operation in there. One is going to get addition, and one is going to get subtraction. And if you remember when we learned about multiplying these, we called them conjugates, right? And when we multiplied them out, the middle two terms canceled out, and so we were just left with two numbers. And so again, now we're just doing that in reverse. 
So we get a 3x plus 5 and a 3x minus 5. Okay, so let's look at another one. Let's say we have x squared minus 1. Okay, it is two terms. It is subtraction. Now we need to decide if they're both perfect squares. Okay, so a number times itself that gives us one. My students are always thrown off by that and they go, no, that's not a perfect square. Well, yes it is. One times one is one. Then we're taking half of the exponent. So half of two is one, so that's just an x. So they're perfect squares. Everything's good. We can go into two binomials. Okay, we have one that's going to be an x plus one and one that's going to be an x minus one. All right, I'm just keeping these orders the same. I'm giving one addition and one subtraction. Okay, so let's look at one that's maybe a little bit more complicated. We have 49. It looks more complicated. I should say that. It looks more complicated, but it's not. 49 minus 256 x to the eighth y squared. Okay, so it looks more complicated. We definitely have a lot more going on, but it's no more difficult to factor. So we're going to check our rules. Is it two terms? Yep, it's two terms, so check. Is it subtraction? Yep, it's subtraction, check. Are they perfect squares? So a number times itself that gives us 49 is seven. Now 256, you're probably not as sure of. Now be really careful here, I should have mentioned this above. Don't worry about the negative, right? I'm never worried about the negative. Five times five is 25. One times one is one. So 256, when I'm typing this in my calculator, right, second x squared, I'm not typing in that negative, I'm just typing in 256 which is 16, so that's good. And I'm taking half of the exponent. So half of eight is four, half of two is one. Okay, so we have two binomials. Now do not change the order. Because the 49 is first, the seven has to be first. Okay, that's 16, x to the fourth y has to be second. Should have made my parentheses larger. Okay, and then one gets addition and one gets subtraction. It doesn't matter which order. So this time I'm just gonna put the subtraction first just to show, right? It doesn't matter whether we have that addition or subtraction first. Okay, now just make sure you're really careful because my students often then get thrown off by a problem like x squared plus 36. And let's say, oh yeah, this is definitely a special case. I can factor this into an x plus six and an x minus six, but we can't because it's not subtraction. All of the rules change when that sign changes. And we're gonna talk about this more as we continue on, but this doesn't meet any of our rules of factoring. It's not a special case. We're actually gonna call this prime. Okay, we'll talk about that more as we go on. Just don't get confused. That addition sign isn't meeting the qualification, so this one cannot be factored as a special case.